So most people don't realize this, but the males that have higher testosterone forage further and will fight harder for the females. And this is really interesting because there's very good evidence now that testosterone can reduce anxiety, promote novelty seeking, and promote competitive interactions. But it's also true that competition itself can increase androgens such as testosterone. I want to repeat that. Competitive environments themselves can increase testosterone. So let's get back to behaviors that can help optimize hormone levels. There's now a lot of literature showing that breathing through the nose, not through the mouth, is powerful for improving lots of things. First of all, it improves cosmetic features of the jaw and face. This was first well-established by my colleagues at Stanford in a book called Jaws. So mouth breathers have changes in the cosmetics of their face and jaw that are really bad um, in terms of uh, attractiveness. And this was done in twin studies. You can look in the book and see some of this. It's really dramatic how being a mouth breather tends to make the chin drop back behind the upper mandible. There's a lengthening of the face, a drooping of the eyes. It can be quite dramatic or modest depending on how much mouth breathing. What does this all mean? This means we have to be breathing properly. It almost sounds kind of, uh, you know, uh, like kind of new agey, like, oh, you have to breathe properly, to get your hormones right. But no, you have to breathe properly to get your breathing and sleep right so that your sleep can actually be deep enough and you're not entering apnea states. And then that will support gonad function. And I wouldn't be putting this out as one of the main behavioral tools up front if it weren't for the fact that the positive effects of getting breathing right on these hormones, testosterone and estrogen, are dramatic and wonderful. Okay, so we've talked about breathing. Let's talk about a third element. So nowadays, there's a lot of interest in using cold as a way to stimulate testosterone. This is mainly because in the, you know, in the sports community, in particular in the bodybuilding community, they are always seeking ways to maximize testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, keep estrogen to its minimum required to still have libido. All this kind of extreme stuff that happens there has led to a recent movement. People have their literally underwear that have ice packs, or I think they're ice pack underwear, so that people are making themselves cold at the level of the gonads in order to try and increase testosterone and libido. Sounds pretty crazy. But believe it or not, that and things like ice baths and cold showers can have positive effects on the sex steroid hormones, both testosterone, mainly in males, and estrogen mainly in females. Now let's talk about particular forms of exercise and how they modulate the steroid hormones. And what you find is that heavy weight training, but not weight training to failure, where completion of a repetition is impossible, leads to the greatest increases in testosterone. So anywhere from one rep maximum to somewhere in the you know six to eight rep repetition range in males or females, increases testosterone significantly. And it does it for about a day, sometimes up to 48 hours. It's very clear that certain collections of nutrients are useful for promoting testosterone and estrogen production in their proper ratios. And those things are what I would call the sort of usual suspects. Vitamin D, which is important for so many biological functions, including endocrine functions. Zinc magnesium, et cetera. And first of all, I'm not shy about my love for butter. I will eat pats of butter directly. I believe if people are going to eat cheese without a cracker, I will eat butter without a cracker. Butter is high in cholesterol, so I don't eat a ton of it, but at least for me and for my lipid profiles, it's fine. Butter has cholesterol, which is a precursor to the sex steroid hormones. And Men and women need testosterone and estrogen. So I eat butter in order to ensure that I get sufficient cholesterol. Butter also has some other things that are beneficial. But again, volume is important and you can't overdo it. 